All right. <clears throat> okay. Oh, my camera's not working. Great job. Oh my goodness, this always happens. Oh no, is that how the, oh no. Look at me, what happened? There we go. <laughs> Why did that happen? What's up y'all? Hello, hello, Avatar. <laughs> I had to, this is, um, this is from Jesse, because he always be hitting me up with these, uh, super chats. <laughs> so I had to go grab a coffee. What's up, folks? Welcome to another stream. You already know what it is with my general YouTube intro. <laughs> So I actually just got back from a session, like literally just got back from a session. It is super hot right now in North Carolina, so excuse me if I got some sweat going on, but as the title says, I just shot for the first time with this lovely tool. Also, if y'all were on the last stream, yes, I went ahead and bought the 45. I got it quick. I actually, um, a local camera shop close to me had it. Music too loud, cool. A camera shop close to me had it used in basically new condition. I don't know what happened. Someone bought it and didn't like it or what, but so I got it at a really good rate. Also, I don't know if y'all can see it, I just shot a whole like hour and a half session. Look at my battery, can y'all see it down there? The battery on this thing is actually really good. That uh, Fujifilm X-T4 battery is kicking. But yeah, let's go ahead and import these photos. Let's see, uh, let's see how the GFX turned out. Yeah, I was very impressed with the battery. I was like, really? This that's what you're doing? It's it's like that, it's good. So let's see. Let's import. Dang y'all, it's hot. I like can't. Source is the card reader. Um, I guess I'm just gonna put this under engagement. It was kind of just like a portrait session. So that's the folder I'm gonna put it in. We're also going to make a second copy. So that'll be our backup. So I usually put it in the same type of place. I'm gonna make a new folder. And yeah, that's it. Let's import and see what happens. If the stream hiccups a little bit, I'm sorry, because again, my computer be struggling when it's trying to do things so especially once it starts making the smart previews for these files we'll see how it goes um for context though this is all gfx 100 s i mainly shot with the 45 i actually liked that focal length a lot but there are a couple of 110 shots in there also i'm not shooting in like full-blown destroy your computer mode <laughs> on the gfx 100 i'm shooting at like I'm shooting in compressed raw and I'm in 35 mil mode. You can kind of tell from the cropping on these. Um, so yeah, 35 mil mode makes the sense, especially if you're gonna try and shoot it for like weddings or something like that. You say you're from Oakland? Not at all. I'm over here in North Carolina.
I'm curious, I was taught to create separate catalog for each shoot. I see you have 2021 main. Why do you do the same catalog? For me, it's just about convenience. It's just much easier to have everything in one place and I can just edit everything and use everything the way I need to and not have to get to anything. It's just so much easier. Loving your file organizing. You need to make a video on it. Yeah, that actually, that actually would be really good. I should do that. Because yeah, the way I organize my files and also back up my stuff, it's all the system that makes it easy for me to find things. And it's all just separated basically by year, by um, session type, and by couple. Oh my goodness, these files. So yeah, this was my first time shooting with the 100S and I do have some feelings. I did ran into, uh, I ran into a couple of things. They weren't too horrible though. What is, what am I seeing here? What are you drinking? Uh, it's a cold brew with some vanilla sweetness in it or something. I usually drink black, but I decided to get a little something this time. I'm on a diet right now and every now and then I want something sweet, so. <laughs> I was like, let me go ahead and put a little sweetness in this. And see how it goes. Ugh. Look at it, so good. Look at it, one to one. Look at it. All the way up in there. Such resolution. There's our before and after. Feel like, oh, one thing I noticed, I think the saturation's a little different on the GFX 100S. I always feel like I wanna turn the saturation up just a little bit. Comparative to like my X-T3 and four. Lightroom is great with parent-child organizing. That's the way I did before Catch One. Mm. Sweet cream nitro cold brew, yeah. <laughs> Going 200%. Uh, oh my goodness, 200. So the one on the right has the sharpening turned all the way down. So this on the left will be a better example of the GFX 100. And it looks like there's worms, you already know. You already know how Lightroom be doing. But you see here on the right, how I'm not really dealing with the worms. That's why I don't sharpen in Lightroom at all. No sharpening. What f-stop, this was wide open. I shot, I shot most everything wide open. That's the one thing when I was shooting, when I shot the 100, the GFX 100, one thing I had to get used to was stopping down more often, just cause it was like so much resolution. I was getting like blurry shots more often. And I wasn't used to that whatsoever. That's amazing, no sharpening required, yeah. And then again, I usually throw it into um, exposure and that's where I do my sharpening there. So right now I'm just kind of going through a couple shots, seeing what I got, seeing what turned out decent. This was too tight. I should have pulled back a little bit. This was the 110. Oh my, you, see, you saw the background, how much I saved the highlights. Did y'all see that? 
Wow, even 50% is so zoomed in. Look at that highlight save. Look at that dynamic range. Ugh. So pulling the highlights down, pulling the shadows up a little bit because they're in heavier shadow, but I don't want the background to be, you know, 100,000% blown out. Skin looks right. Not saturation boost required to my eye. Yeah, it, I can't tell if it's, the saturation's not enough or what. First time ever seeing one of your editing sessions. Thank you for all the tutorials, help with the wedding photography. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh oh. Uh, Lightroom, y'all saw that, right? What was that? Lightroom's freaking out. Oh my God, GFX 100 photos. <laughs> Lightroom's like, I already can't even deal with Fujifilm in the first place. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? Same thing, pull them shadows up a bit so that they're not totally in shadow. To be fair, it freaks out with Raph. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lightroom's just like, I don't understand. Okay, so first thoughts. First thoughts of using the GFX 100. So 100S. So focusing is great and it's fast. The shutter is way slower than I'm used to. But again, this is comparative to like ultra snappy um, like X-T3, X-T4. The shutter's like so slow. I'm just not used to it at all. And again, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. We're just talking comparative to an X-T3, X-T4. It was like a world of difference. Like I can make GIFs and all kinds of stuff. I should have just synced the settings. I don't know what's wrong with me. I can make GIFs and all that kind of stuff with the X-T3, X-T4. I would never even attempt to make a GIF with the GFX. That's how slow the shutter is comparative. I mean, I think it gets like five or six frames a second. So again, compared to the X-T3, that's like crawling slow. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a little bit to get used to. It's just very different. Um, my camera ended up overheating or almost overheating at one point which was surprising and luckily it wasn't a big deal because I was um it was the only camera I brought to this session so that would have been fun if I'd have been like hold on let's wait for five minutes because my camera overheated <laughs> the weight of the camera is actually really bearable even with this 45 on it this is a great this weight is so good um, it almost is the same weight as like the X-T3 with a grip with, you know, the two batteries and a lens. It's almost about that same weight. They're, they're pro it's probably just a little bit heavier. Obviously the bigger lens is, is gonna make a difference, but I was, I'm surprised at the ergonomics, the feel and the weight. It's actually really good. I'm a fan. Um, after shooting today and dealing with the little bit of things that I did, it makes me worry more about weddings. I am going to attempt shooting the GFX 100S at a wedding, but it's it's just half of it too is I've I've gotten so used to the way I shoot at weddings, which is kind of more of a run and gun style, that I think I might have a hard time adjusting to how I would have to shoot with the GFX 100S, which would be a more you know, slow down, really knowing what shots I want to take type of approach. And when moments happen, you have to be on it like way before it happens. You can't just like instantly click up and 
catch something real quick. What's your main reason for purchasing the GFX? Just because it's cool. <laughs> I mean, that's really, I think I was debating on getting two and making them my main wedding cameras, but at this point currently, I don't think I'm gonna do that. Um, I think I might just make it more of sessions, engagement sessions, stuff like that. Like the stuff that's a little bit more low key that I can handle on my end. Here. I think a wedding. Oh, computer's already starting to freak out. So we're starting to build the smart previews now. That's right. The situation is okay. It is because of all the resolution that's there. I don't know. It's like my eyes are being like, hey, it's not enough saturation I don't know why it looks like there's not enough saturation to me I would use it for details macro lens form engagement not ceremony yeah I was thinking that too I don't like to bring too much stuff with me <laughs> so that's the only reason I wouldn't do that but that would be like the perfect scenario like yeah, maybe I won't do smart previews right now. But yeah, like the beginning of the day, everything before the um, the ceremony would be doable with the GFX 100. When stuff starts moving, that's when it's gonna be kind of questionable. So like your cere it could probably ceremonies are pretty slow too. It could handle that as well. Um, so like ceremony, but then after that, I, I would be questionable. Um, the second shooter that I tend to use more often, she's like really good. So I would actually like bring her on to a wedding and let her handle a lot of the day and me shoot with the GFX 100S. Like, that's how I think I'm gonna try it. Bring my strongest second with me and then just be like, hey, I need you to be a little bit more on top of it today because I don't know what this camera can do. I'm, I'm really thinking about doing that and then trying to do a behind the scenes of me shooting the GFX 100S at weddings. like this is not warm enough yeah so again with brown skin if it's starting to look too orange and it's gonna have an orange like you can see me there is an orange tint to it but the saturation orange and the HSL is the main place you want to look at to keep things from looking too orange and make it look more like natural and glowing. I'm actually, I'm gonna export these photos real quick. I just wanna see what the final, the final look looks like coming all the way out. So let's export this and see if my computer freaks out. Um, same thing with my folders, everything goes in the same place. So I make a new folder. This is Jasmine and Brad. I'm gonna put it in the other folder. And this time I'm just gonna do full resolution, no resize. Sharpen for screen is low and then we'll be opening in exposure. Yep. It puts my computer freaking out. Useful. Hi John, any updates for Patreon content? So I'm gonna be, and I need to make a video just to update you all on what I'm gonna be doing on Patreon. So I'm gonna commit to like once a month 
and y'all should be seeing new content there once a month there is stuff up there already so i suggest digging through some of the older stuff but that's my plan on patreon is once a month i actually think i'm going to do a video on how i manage my finances obviously it's not going to be like financial advice but i'll just kind of show you how i look at my finances to help me kind of like divvy out my money and save my money and so on and so forth um, so here is 100s out of Lightroom, no sharpening except for just a little bit of screen sharpening and then I have my sharpening and presets sharpening and grain preset which it kicks in a little bit more contrast Add some sharpening on there and adds its own grain. Which yeah, you can see it makes stuff like tack sharp. It's almost too much sharpening. Look how thick them lines get. Ah, that looks good, y'all. GFX 100S, so good. The dynamic range is actually super surprising. Oh yeah, see, I should have stopped down even that little bit. She's out of focus from where he is. And that's at f2.8. It's not like drastic when you're not zoomed in, but if you're really looking at it, you can tell she's like tiny bit out of focus. Uh oh, my thing is still free. Is it still exporting? Why is my thing? Is backblaze open? It is. So no, it's not backing up. <laughs> you have a print at home? Yeah, that's that's the real test. <laughs> Here's a black and white. What's going on here? That blur in the corner looks weird. It's my black and white. Also more contrast and heavy on the grain. Yeah, these look good. Imagine a camera like the 100S, but with the speed of like an X-T3. Just imagine all that resolution for no reason. Photos looking crazy. But then at that point again, that's where everyone's like, but that's the same as like a full frame. You can get that in a full frame. Get the Sony A1 and get full frame in 30 frames a second. Awesome, sounds good, looking forward to it. If you have a moment, someone in another video asked a good question about your white balance adjustments. We'd love to know to get your insights. <laughs> Magenta man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's good and actually that's why I need to do that in the patreon too is go ahead and put a poll in there for like stuff y'all want to see um but yeah again the the story with the patreon also is that you know I had it going and like there was no activity in it whatsoever so I ended up closing it but then like every other day someone would be like hey man your your patreon I was trying to see your patreon and there's nothing there. Um, so finally I reopened it. So I'm trying to get back into the grind on that Patreon. Get y'all some more content. Looking forward to that finance video. Really interested to see what you do. Yeah. And it's again, it's just going to be kind of like, this is how I divvy up my money in with it. Not you do. It's just kind of, you know, me and my wife, we paid off all of our debt. And now I'm carrying like low level debt on the business side. We're talking like $5,000 and below. And that's all I ever have in debt at any time. So, you know, just seeing kind of how I do my money, I'm sure would help somebody. Cause honestly, I was pretty bad with money for a while <laughs> until me and my wife started trying to pay off our debt. So I think it'd be helpful for some people, especially on the business side.
What's the main reason for you to use Fuji and not a camera like a Canon or Sony? I just like Fujifilm. When I first started using it, everything about the camera just felt good. And because of that, it made me, you know, just keep using it. The menus are nice. I really like the film camera-esque approach with having the aperture on the lens, which you don't see a lot of. I like that a lot. Like, that's one of my favorite parts, honestly. Um, this one doesn't have the dials on the top and everything, but I actually don't even use the dials. Like, the way this is laid out is exactly how I use the camera. So, that was another cool thing about the GFX 100S for me, is this just feels exactly how I want it to be. The only thing I hate is that they got rid of the D-pad on the back. I really wish there was a D-pad, um, but I've been adjusting to it, which I'll make a video at some point too about how I set up the GFX 100S for me to use it for like weddings and stuff. Likewise, happy to be one of 15. Looking forward to the updates. Bad with money should be my middle name. Yeah. It's really, it, money is just, it's the worst, y'all. It really, it really is. It really is just like one of those things where until you actually really start getting used to like using it and using it well, it's kind of like the worst thing. Like, you never even want to talk about it, you know? Because it just makes you feel bad. But, like, I'm at the point now where it, money is cool, you know? Like, I'm cool talking about it and stuff. And it's not because I'm trying to, oh, I'm so paid. I got mad money. It's just, like, I've been managing it long enough now that it's not scary to me anymore. Did you use flash at this session? I did not. This is all natural light. What software is this? This is Lightroom Classic. Not CC. So I'm not editing everything right now. I'm just kind of trying to go through real quick. I usually give my couples. I usually give my couples a preview pretty soon after their session. So. Well, thanks for the sub. Before my wife, I was going stupid with money. My wife sat me down and was like, what the heck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Late to the live stream. How's the new presets coming along? <laughs> I need to sit down with them one more time. I think I'm about there with them being done. I just have to, I have to sit down with them one more time. But yeah, on the Patreon, I want to do a lot more just like low key stuff too. Like, I just hop on the camera and, you know, barely editing, just kind of being like, hey, guys, let's talk about something. Maybe the saturation is okay. Yeah. Noticing your black and white, you use different color profile. Mind mentioning it, oddly enough. I use your preset and click black and white and do minor adjustments. The color profile is different. I think, yeah, the black and white that I've been using, so I have a couple of different black and whites and one of them, one of them that I use is only because my X-T30 and also now like the GFX, doesn't work with my standard black and white, which is the one that I based the natural fills on. 
Um, so I can't remember what the difference was actually. I'd have to go back and look at it. Hey John, when you find time, check your email, I have a problem. Oh no! Yeah, I usually try to go through those at some point in the day, but usually that does happen. I get a bunch of emails. There's something, I hit up Squarespace, I think it's them. I hit Squarespace up and I was like, y'all, mad people email me all the time. Asking about the preset, because they have problems with the, the zip file. And then Squarespace always gets back to me and they're like, it looks fine to me. Everything's working on our end. And I'm like, well, it must not be working, bro. Cause I get a fair amount of emails of people being like, hey, something's not working. It's mad annoying, but yeah, I'll try and get, I try my best to get to the emails as quickly as possible. Hi, kindly tell a little about the skin exposure software you just used. Like, what do you edit in it? Yeah, so exposure, I'm actually not doing much of anything inside of exposure. So it's, exposure is just another program that also does photo editing. So I could, if I wanted to, edit my photos the whole way. I generally don't, but I can. So what I use exposure for is sharpening my photos since Lightroom doesn't play friendly with Fujifilm files. Y'all know what it is, magenta. <laughs> So basically the process is like, I'll edit a photo like this, right? Get it to where I like it, looks good. It's pretty much time to export. So then I go, what is that? Yo. So I go and I export. And then I have it immediately open inside of Exposure. So it takes the JPEG that was exported and puts it inside of Exposure and then I add sharpening there. I think it's called Kodak something from another video. Kodak? Are you talking about film stuff? For the zip file is a Mac thing, zip it with your Windows machine, it'll be fine. Hmm, I didn't know that. I might have to check to see Reggie. Reggie, y'all, y'all, if y'all don't follow Reggie, cause like, I may teach a bunch of stuff, but if you want like the all the way technical, follow Reggie, seriously, seriously. <laughs> Go to his channel right now and, and subscribe. Cause I, I be asking Reggie for help all the time. <laughs> I'm just not, it's because he has an engineering background. I'm not as technical as he is. I got too much artsy fartsy going on. So I'm always like, yeah, just do the thing and it's great. And I can, I can teach you how to do it. But I always come from a like, layman's term, straightforward, this is how you do it kind of approach. Whereas Reggie will break down, he'll break it down like the numbers and the sciences, like really. <laughs> now I did it on my phone, it worked perfect. Then I just air dropped it to the Mac. <laughs> Reply problem with presets. I had to call in Marky Mark and break into the file like it was an Italian job. <laughs> That's not good. I'll have to try what Reggie just talked about. But yeah, so see, I have a preset here for sharpening and grain. And that's that's it. That's all I do in exposure is sharpening and grain you can see it so this is with the sharpening and a little bit of film grain added and this is without the sharpening which it does have a nice kind of creamy smooth kind of look to it i like that tack sharp destroy your eyes sharpness <laughs> it's so sharp ah! 
Yeah, I downloaded another person's preset and it was zipped on a Mac and there's mad issues with compatibility. So use your dual boot, yeah. Yeah, cause I, I did zip it on the Mac side. That's probably exactly what it is. Reggie coming through with the crucial answers. Saving the day. I wish they were centered up a little bit. But it's a GFX, I can crop as much as I want to, and it won't be a problem. It'll still be a huge file. Uh-oh, it's that time. You see all those greens? You see the greens? Magenta, man. <laughs> Yo, I wish YouTube would go ahead and give me the clip. The clip feature so y'all could clip 50 different years of me saying magenta man <laughs> all these youtube features i still ain't got yet oops that last one was cool too though You need to come and do a wedding in South Africa. One of the most beautiful weddings. Ooh, that'd be awesome. I haven't been out of the States yet at all, y'all. I need to go somewhere. I need to go somewhere. But once I got it, it works. Looks amazing. Awesome. I like that. Burn my retina sharpness. <laughs> my boy always loved the viz. Thank you so much. Hey John, as I'm living in a country with universal health care, may I ask you why it's important for you to inform your clients about your insurance on your website? Is it mandatory? It's not mandatory, but over here, like a lot of couples will ask you all kinds of random questions um, and things like the knot and wedding wire tell them, hey, these are the questions you need to be asking your wedding photographer. So over here, at least from my experience, letting couples know that you have insurance really just kind of highlights the fact that you're like legit. You know, there's there's a lot of people over here that it's just like a person with a camera. So if you're like, yeah, I pay for insurance and I have coverage, you know, I'm not just Smojo with a camera. Like I'm taking this seriously. Also, some wedding venues actually require you to have insurance to be able to shoot there. So I put it up there just so like they can already upfront be like, okay, cool, he's insured. So if anything happens, we're good. Or if the venue demands having an insured photographer, they know I am already. So right now I'm trying to combine a Brenizer photo. It looked like, how many photos was that? 27 photos. So a 27 photo Brenizer, which is just a panoramic photo focused on them. This one is a uh, silhouette. Ooh, what time is it? I have, a, I have a meeting I have to go to at four, so I gotta make sure I watch the time. <laughs> Not get too caught up editing photos, which I am known to do. Mm. It's so hot today, the coffee's hitting the spot. So good. Can you get insured as a sole proprietor? You can. Yeah, insurance itself is not even totally like a business thing. It's like, it's just straight up you being insured. Because basically most of the insurance is like damage to venues, which is why venues want you to have it. So like if you break something at a venue and you're insured, then they know they can hit you up and hit your insurance up and get stuff taken care of. So you you don't even have to be like a legitimate business. But yeah, sole proprietor, you should be able to get, I, I had insurance when I was a sole proprietor. I got insurance pretty early on. 
I'm an early investor type of person. So even when I didn't need stuff, I would invest in it first and foremost, just because you said the camera was over overheating. Yeah, it, it almost overheated once the, the option or not the option, but the, the warning came up like the little yellow, like, Hey, I'm starting to get hot. It came up. I turned it off and turned it back on for a second and it was fine. Unable to merge. Let's try perspective. What would you do if it happens at a wedding? So again, right now I'm still on the fence of if the GFX 100S can handle a wedding, but I would, especially with the 100S and I'm not sure of how it works, I would have backup cameras and I would have a second photographer. So if I did end up with overheating, first off, I would have two cameras and there's no way they would both be overheating at the same time. Um, if for some reason that happened, I would have backup cameras and I would have a second and I could tell them, hey, step in my spot and start taking main shots while I swap real quick. Hello from Bangladesh. Welcome, welcome. Bought a new X-T3 and a Viltrox 23. Nice. The minimum focus distance is really bad, which will be an affordable macro extension too. So I use the, um, I have it. This is the macro tube I use, or extension tube, the MCEX16. But this is the one I use. And usually I use either the 56 or the 50. And use it with this, and it's it works great. Did you try to pick up your camera each day to stay sharp or every once in a while? Uh, I mean, I shoot fairly often enough. Cause if I'm not at a wedding or a portrait session, I'm usually taking pictures of my kids. So I, I do generally just like to take photos. So that keeps me like on top of things. But there was a period between like the end of 2020 until like I started doing weddings this year where I hadn't shot for like four or five months. Unable to merge. Okay, so if you run into an issue like this where with a Brenizer where it's not able to merge, what I've found sometimes is taking some photos out help it helps it because what's happening sometimes is it just can't figure out what's happening. So I usually try and take some photos out, especially if anything feels like a double. Let's see if that made a difference. John, you're really approaching on 100K. I can't believe it. Like really, I'm actually super surprised. Yeah, that should be happening. I'm uh, guessing next month sometime is usually the time frame on how many, like I get a thousand subs, so. Shot my friend's wedding last week. Never shot a wedding before. Watched loads of your videos. Thank you, you helped me so much. My Expo 3, 16, 1, 4, 23, 1, 4, 56. Nice, that's a great setup. Do you do film photography at your weddings as well? No. I haven't gotten to that stage yet. I don't feel <laughs> comfortable yet enough with film to do it at a wedding. I have done it at a couple of portrait sessions. I might do it more often too. Like I should have brought one with me today just because, but I wanted to focus on the 100S. Yo, I'm gonna be mad if this photo doesn't come out. Never miss a live. Cheers from Brazil. Thank you so much. Welcome to the stream. Come on, Lightroom. You can do it. <laughs> no! Okay, hold on. So if I remember correctly, so here's my safe shot. And then I went to the left. And then I came back and did the right. Two, three, four. And then I went up. So let's just see if it'll merge these. This will be like a thin strip. I went back and ended up going, doing the top and the bottom. We got Denmark in the house. Hello, welcome to the stream. Hey! Osa's in the house. <laughs> What's up, man? Do you have any tips for trying to market your services? That's always the hardest one. 
um right now i'm finding that instagram is actually really good for putting yourself out there and i would focus a lot on instagram now again instagram is kind of changing because they want to start pushing video more but if you can get a little bit of video worked in with your photo work and we're talking about just like small snippets of bts so yeah see you see how it was able to do that Yeah, this works. That works for me. But yeah, uh, that into your photo. I'm actually it's kind of I'm John from Trinidad. Hello, hello, welcome to the stream. You always need to. Hype your computer up to export. <laughs> You're like, come on, computer, you can do it. Best marketing tips is word of mouth. Word of, word of mouth is amazing. If you can get word of mouth, that's one of the best. But yeah, Instagram's a fairly free way to do it, but you have to find ways to get a little bit viral so that they can find you easier. Um, what I did in the past, and I talked about it before, is I used a service called Thumbtack. Thumbtack was cool. It's kind of expensive now. It was cheap back in the day. And what I would do is I would market myself to engagement couples and then try and work them into a full wedding. Oh, did it crop it? So what was this, like 10 photos? GFX 100S 10 photos, 100 megapixels a piece. Yeah, Lightroom's like, why? Ah! <laughs> Sri Lanka in the house, hello, hello. Oh no, it didn't crop it. Let's see, what's the dimensions on this photo? <laughs> Look at 26,000 by 10,000. It's huge. Oh, there goes the famous Christmas music again. We'll just let it play this time. Um, so for some reason, it didn't get the whole first full shot, and that's fine. So I'm just going to crop out their feet. Oh my god, you're cropping the feet out? <laughs> How could you? Get them centered up. Boom. Boom. Since this was kind of, I just like totally underestimate the dynamic range. I was trying to make this a silhouette, but. This thing handles light so well. That's good. So now I have this huge photo. Zambia in the house. What's the specs on your computer if looking to upgrade? So this is, it's custom built. It's a PC and a Mac at the same time. I have a Intel i9 9900K and an AMD 6800 XT for the graphic card. I also have 128 gigs of RAM, which is a little overkill, but you know. But you know. Gotta get that power in there for no reason. What is the recommended photo size for Facebook? Uh, so I don't really know. I usually go based off of a lot of the stuff I learned at Squarespace. So if you're doing like web size photos, make them like 2,500 pixels on a long side or less. Um, that's generally how I export my stuff. Somewhere in that range.
Get the power in there for no reason. <laughs> Merc. Merc. <laughs> Let's see, I think I got enough little photos for a nice little preview. Yeah. I feel like this photo is not warm enough. Something's off. Too much magenta for once. <laughs> Too much magenta? How? I also use the GFX 100 for weddings and bridal couture. Cotswolds, UK, nice, and it rocks. That came from Mia Nice. Oh, nice. So yeah, you're used to, I'm like, this is slow from when I'm, I'm so used to the X-T3 and like the X-T series and its speed that I'm using this and I'm scared. It's not slow at all, but compared to the X-T series, it's, it's a little slow. So it could totally work at a wedding. I just like, am worried for it. You're shooting with auto ISO? Not at all. Never. Never. Uh, so, okay. Because someone left a comment on one of my videos recently talking about settings. And I didn't agree with what they were saying at all, but um, I see where he was coming from. So, one main thing he was say saying was shooting an aperture priority and auto ISO. I'm not a fan. Um, again, I want to control the camera. I want to tell the camera what it's going to do. So ISO, I always control. Basically, I'm shooting full manual always. Um, auto ISO is okay, but the problem, especially if you're shooting aperture priority and auto ISO, is either the ISO will kick up too high and you'll get way too grainy of a photo when you didn't need to, or it's gonna control the shutter, make the shutter too low and you're gonna get a blurry photo. That's again, Aaron was, how do you get your photo so sharp? Because I tell the camera what it's supposed to do. You know, I don't like pick and choose or anything like that. This is... So yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of auto ISO. Cause it's just too much guessing. Like I don't know what the ISO is doing. And that scares me. <laughs> you know, I'm not about that. Have you needed to calibrate your monitor? If so, how? Uh, I've calibrated before. I haven't calibrated this specific camera or excuse me, this monitor. Um, but I do have a Spider X, which is a great way to calibrate, which I made a video about that. Why there is not a full frame camera from Fuji? My guesstimate is because they're focusing on medium format, which is what I'm shooting with now. So this is medium format. Obviously medium format is larger than full frame. So I think that's what they're trying to focus on. So to me, like the GFX series is kind of like the full frame Fuji film. Like everyone asks about where is the full frame. This is it. This is what it's going to be. Hey, John, Lou here all the way from Cape Town, South Africa. Welcome to the stream. Absolutely love your work. So dope that I can learn from you. Thank you so much. With the on-camera flash, do you have the flash mode set to ETTL or manual? I do that manual as well. Um, so basically, so I have my flash right here. Pretty much, I'm turning it on. 
I'm setting it to manual, and then I'm choosing the power. So something like that. You see how it's at 116 now? And I usually keep it there. I don't really move it much. Once I have the flash power where I want it to be, then I just change the settings on my camera if need be. But generally, when you're shooting in a flash scenario, light's not changing that much. So it's easier to just dial in your settings and forget it. You know, like your shutter's probably going to be around 160th because the sync speed for most cameras is around 200 or 250. So you're not going above that. Also, the flash helps stop motion. So going down to 160, 125 is okay. Um, your ISO is how I deal with bringing in more light when it's dark. So that's also set. For me, it's like 800 to 1000. That will also pick up the background ambient light. And it also dictates how much of the flash it's going to pick up and how kind of how hot the flash is in the photo and then after that you just set your flash power and you set it like and really you're not moving much because at that point too flash is also about the distance that the flash has to travel that's a big part of flash that i think a lot of people forget about is that it's not just flash how do i do flash what's the flash power where is your flash how far is it from your subject? So again, when you've, if you've watched any of my photos or my videos talking about how to deal with flash, the reason why I can put the flash on my camera and set my power to like 116, 132 is because I'm shooting wide, so I'm pretty close to my subject. So I know the flash is literally right there and it's just gonna flash onto them. Um, whereas if I had a flash across the room, it'd be a different story. A grid would help direct it and then also I would set the power a little bit higher to kick that flash out further. You can set a custom max ISO. That is true. I just don't, I don't like, I don't like auto ISO. It's too much, too much guessing on the camera's end. But yeah, it's not bad. It's not a bad setting. Um, I should be able to just I should be able to just copy those settings over. From Paris, Paris in the house, great stuff, thank you. Bought your natural fills preset and it made the photos look a bit too grainy. Any way to fix it? Yeah, there's grain turned on in the photo. If you go down when you're editing a photo, so I'll show you right here. If you're editing a photo, go down to the bottom, go to effects. Or if you're in Lightroom CC, it's also under effects. You'll see it'll say grain. Just turn that down and it'll be gone. It's it's an actual added grain effect look. I like a good added grain. Um, I'm a big fan. But yeah, if you don't like it, that's the point with presets. Um, presets are never really like a one and done. They should be a color base for you to start with. And then from there, you can like edit it to fit your own style. There we go. These look pretty good. GFX 100S in here doing that work. Do you find a histogram gets in the way when developing or just prefer not to see it? Yeah, I don't really, I don't use it. Is it not, is it closed? Yeah, it is closed. I, yeah, I don't really use it, so I just closed it to save space. Do you usually, do you only use manual or do you also use aperture priority? Only manual. Now, when I started doing photography, I did start with aperture priority. The main reason, cause it's just a lot at a wedding day, thinking about your settings and thinking about the lights and also trying to take photos and direct your client. It's a lot. It's a whole bunch on your brain. So aperture priority helps with that cause there's less for you to think about. But yeah, I generally don't, like once you get used to it, I suggest people switch over to, um, switch over to manual. Like you can handle it, it's not so bad. It does take some time to get used to, but you can definitely handle it.
Thank you so much for answering my question about the flash mode. I have a small wedding in a few hours. Oh, nice. Yeah, I hope that helps out. Look how much of a difference Magenta makes. <laughs> Magenta man. I'm going to do a photo critique in my next live stream and then just be like, there's not enough magenta in this photo. <laughs> critique everything. There's not enough magenta. Where is the magenta? Nice photos. Thank you so much. Please explain how to get better skin tone using Lightroom. Uh, so the one, the one thing starting out there, so skin tone is subjective. That's let's just start there. It really depends on how you feel. A lot of people tell me my skin tones are way too magenta or they're too red. I'm, I'm a big fan of magenta, so I kind of over magenta everything. But getting good skin tones, I think, starts in, ca in camera first. So it starts with how you're actually white balancing everything. After that, a lot of it depends on the skin tone itself. <sighs> Something's weird with this white balance. I think it's too much magenta. <laughs> For once, it's too much magenta. No, there's a lot of green. There's like a green cast on them. That's what it is. And it's like irking me. What if let's turn down the saturation of the greens a little bit. But yeah, so general, okay. Generally, how I approach doing skin tone and editing white balance in general, right? So white balance in general, let's just, let's find a photo real quick. Let's take a random picture. This one has a whole bunch of green cast, so we'll use this. <laughs> Magenta man doesn't look as fun. So what color profile do you use? Automatic or your own custom? Yeah, a lot of times I do auto white balance. So this is straight out of the camera, auto white balance. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll just start out and see if Lightroom is gonna do decent and just auto, but I don't like the way that looks, so I'm gonna go back. Um, so first I apply my preset. And then from there, I'm using my eyes to kind of see what is standing out to me. So right now, everything's very green cast. So I'm going to turn up magenta to get rid of all that green. I'll go to a point where the skin tones feel good to me. Also, it seems a little too cool, kind of. So I'll warm it up a little bit. And then after I get to that point, actually, no, I liked it where it was. After I get to that point, next I come down to the HSL section. And basically in this section, this is where you're dealing with colors by themselves. So a lot of times, I don't really mess with the hues too much because in my preset, I like where the hues are, but I will come down to saturation. So like if their skin is looking too orange, I'll turn down the saturation on orange. And then if their skin is not looking warm enough i'll warm up the whole scene because i i white balance based off a of skin tone first always and then that's always my approach to white balancing a scene now this one's hard because it was like heavy green cast if anything i might turn down the saturation on the greens so that everything isn't so green cast but that's that's generally how i deal with skin tones which focus mode are you using during a wedding? Manual or... So I use automatic focus, but I'm not using consistent automatic. So just single point and just like single, single auto focus. So not like, you know, um, continuous auto focus. The only time I ever change is if I have people walking towards me or away from me. And at that point, I'll switch over to zone. Oh yeah, here's another great example. Look at how green everything is. So 
So again, if stuff is too green, that's gonna be your magenta, because again, green and magenta, so. I usually turn the magenta up until skin tones start feeling more normal. And then from there, if I need warmth, I'll add a little bit. This is actually pretty good where it was. Um, we'll desaturate the greens a little bit too. But yeah, white balance is just a lot of, you know, getting familiar with how you want things to look overall. And again, I white balance based on skin tone first. Skin tone always. Does auto ISO actually work on the GFX camera regarding and respecting the minimal shutter speed? Uh, I am not sure. I don't use auto ISO enough to know that. I do most of my stuff in manual. I wanna know what this craziness is. It's not exporting that, but for some reason it just keeps showing stuff like that. Can you explain the difference between vibrance and saturation? So vibrance, if I remember correctly, is more of like, I'm trying to figure out the best way to put it. It's like the glow of the photo where saturation is like the actual color. Um, so let's see if we can compare somewhere. So here's a photo and you turn on the saturation, you get black and white. Vibrant, you don't really get black and white, you see? Saturation literally gets rid of the colors. Vibrance is just like how much of the photos like glow. I, I don't know if that makes sense. It's kind of like saturation, but it's totally different. Thanks and overall huge thanks for what you're doing. You helped a lot, awesome. You're welcome. Some of these photos though, they're like too warm or something. Clear, thank you so much. Okay, <laughs> I was struggling trying to explain it. <laughs> Thanks for this live stream. Love watching your vids while I work from home, currently working in the tech field and do wedding portrait gigs on the side. Nice. The 100S files are quite different to edit, in my opinion, compared to the 50S. To me, yeah. I found that's the case too between even like the GFX, or not the G, but like the X-T3 to the X-T4. The files just act differently for whatever reason. How do you feel about wedding photos that have great light and poses, but you crop limbs? 
So I'm not very strict on limb cropping. Actually, people ask me all the time why I crop some of my photos the way I do. Um, per like the technical perfect rules of photography, I crop my photos all wrong all the time. I, I don't know. I like to shoot more for the emotion and the feel of things rather than the perfection. Also, a lot of times that kind of stuff is only photographers. So it's like photographers for photographers sake, getting on other photographers about how they don't do things correctly, but your couples will be fine with it. So again, that's not me being like, don't care about the rules or don't like try to follow the rules, but on the same end, you shouldn't compromise the feel of a photo to make sure that everything's perfect and not cut off, you know? Unless you're doing studio work or commercial work where you have the time to sit down and get the photo perfect. At a wedding, it's a little different. Hello, John. What should I get? 35, F2, or 1.4. So the 1.4 focus is a little bit slower. I also don't like it has that old school focus where the like inside of the lens actually comes out. I'm not a fan of that. The F2 has a little bit of a better focus and it's faster, but you're not letting in as much light. I personally like the F2 better and it's cheaper. Um, but again, that's, it's kind of personal preference. They're both awesome lenses. I've used both, they're great. But yeah, I cut limbs off all the time. You know, like her hands right here, right at the corner. I don't ever really take too many full body shots. I always cut off like around the knee or something. You know, like right at the feet. You know, there's some crops I try not to do, but on the same end, I'm not gonna sit here and destroy my life trying to get the shot to be so extra perfect. I'm just not. So that's, that's kind of where I sit. Same thing here, so here's a full body. And then the rest of them are all like cut at the knee. Or like this. In my country, they both are in similar prices. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, if you think you'll need the extra light, go ahead with the 1.4. So yeah, that's how I feel about cropping. I'm not very particular. I try my best not to have stuff cropped in certain ways, but same thing here. So here's full body. But then when they walk up more, like I'm just gonna keep the framing the same, you know? I'm not gonna readjust and be like, oh no. Um, I should be able to sync these settings, right? Same scene, same lens. Yeah, overall decent little session. Decent little session. Everything's looking pretty good. Everything's looking pretty good. 
sync these settings over. Actually, I almost have the whole session edited right now. Here goes that splotchy lighting I was talking about. If y'all caught my Instagram live earlier. It's not horrible, but it's also like, it's just annoying. Who's your favorite music artist? Favorite? Ugh. That's hard. It changes pretty often. Right now, I'm really into Kiefer. Kiefer's my dude. Loving his stuff. Um. Yeah, Kiefer's kind of on top right now for the stuff I really like. Are you investing in Fujifilm stock? I do have a couple of shares. Probably should get some more. I would get the 3514. It's an awesome lens. Yeah, both the F2 and the 14 are great lenses. Like, I don't think you could go wrong with either one. Let me see. So I'm going to divvy out some of these photos, see what I'll get for the preview. Yeah, that's probably a good full preview right there. 18 photos is like, honestly, nearly the whole session. <laughs> I'd be doing that sometimes. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll get y'all a preview pretty soon. Do the preview, it's like half the session. It's not even just a preview anymore. It's like literally, you may as well have just delivered the whole session. All right, folks. Ugh, something about this white balance is bothering me. I've been experimenting with the 5612 for video. And if you can deal with the autofocus, it produces. Yeah, the autofocus is always the thing for me, but it looks great. Especially if you're like manually focusing it. It's a great looking lens. But yeah, that's that's about it for me today. I'm going to go ahead and export these and deliver them to the couple. And again, I have a meeting coming up soon anyway. But I just wanted to hop on here and talk about my uh, first experiences with the GFX 100S and kind of how it worked overall and the results I got from it. Um, overall, so far, it's pretty good. Like I said, again, comparative to an XT series, it's pretty slow. Um, but it's not like slow as in the camera slow it's again compared to the xt series but yeah i'm hoping to try and shoot it at a wedding at some point but i'm still scared because it's just so different than the xt series do you shoot any any weddings yet i haven't really booked any i've done a couple hybrid ones um but no no indian weddings just yet but yeah i'm gonna sign off export these and get them back to my couple so Again, thanks for hanging out on the channel. I hope you enjoyed the stream. If you have any questions about the GFX 100S, leave them in the comments below once this is published. And yeah, y'all have a good day. Have a good weekend. And I will be in touch.
All right. Peace.